Now entering the studio are today's celebrity contestants. From the X-Files, he's the brilliant FBI paranormal investigator, Fox Mulder, David Duchovny. An international star who sparkles on stage, screen, and television, Lynn Redgrave. And a stellar name in bookstores and at the box office, the world's best-selling author, Stephen King. And now, here is the host of Jeopardy, Alex Trebek. Thank you, Johnny Gilbert. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our annual Exercise in Humility, as some of your favorite celebrities from the world of show business, literature, and sports put their egos on the line, try to demonstrate their intellectual skills in order to win a lot of money for their favorite charities. This is usually one of the most enjoyable weeks of the year here on Jeopardy, and I know you're going to enjoy this half hour featuring David, Lynn, and Stephen. Thank you for coming here today. Good luck. Let's go to work. Thank here comes you, the Jeopardy board. Oh. Yes. Oh, no Here are the categories for you. Remember, there will be one daily double in this round of play. Fictional characters. Oh. Bird television. Oh. Bird. Travel and tourism. Oh, no. Rhyme time. Oh. The Bible. Ah. And finally, potpourri. <laughs> you won the toss. <laughs> you select our first clue. Ah. Fictional characters for 100. Answer. This boy was lawless and vulgar and bad, and Tom Sawyer was under strict orders not to play with him. David. Who is Huckleberry Finn? You're right. You get to pick. I'll take fictional characters for 200, please. Charles Dickens considered calling this title character Spankle or Copper Boy. David. Who is David Copperfield? Yes. Fictional characters for 300, please. This Bronte heroine uses the pseudonym Jane Elliott after she flees from Mr. Rochester. Stephen. Who is Jane Eyre? Correct. Uh, fictional characters for 400. Answer. This detective was modeled in part on Dr. Joseph Bell, one of Arthur Conan Doyle's teachers. Stephen. Uh, who is Sherlock Holmes? Correct. Uh, fictional characters for 500. This D.H. Lawrence lady plays around with a playwright before she gambles with a gamekeeper. David. Who is Lady Chatter? You are right. You'd be mad. I'd like uh, the Bible for 100, please. Answer. Man's first job was as a gardener, as God told him to dress and keep the Garden of Eden. David. Who is Adam? Right. A uh, Bible for 200, please. The last word in the King James Version Old Testament is curse, and this is the first word. Lynn. Uh, <laughs> You what is bless? Got in and you what is bless? No. David. What is in? In. Yes. Select again. Uh, the Bible for 300, please. Answer. In the New Testament order, Paul's first epistle goes to this group, not friends or countrymen. David. Who are the Romans? Yes. Select again. Bible for 400, please. During the second plague, these amphibians came out of the water. Stephen. What are frogs? Right. What are frogs? Uh, let's have uh, bird TV for 100. First clue. It's Big Bird's Boulevard. Stephen. Oh, what is Sesame Street? That is right, and that mm. takes you to $1,200. You are $200 off the lead, and we are now going to take our first break. What, we will come I back to conclude the Jeopardy round right after this. <laughs> Welcome back. A word of explanation. Jeopardy is not only about what you know. It's also about how quickly you can signal with your button. And if you ring in before the system is armed, as Lynn Redgrave has discovered, you lock yourself out, unfortunately. I think that must be it. It's That's driving it. me nuts. <laughs> All right. These guys know nothing. They simply read my mind and then give the answer. It's ridiculous. Oh, All right. It's let's a ridiculous see if, game. Let's see if things are different now as we continue. Yeah. Stephen, select. The Bible for 500. Answer there. The Daily Double in the round. And it gives you a chance to take the lead. You can risk any or all of your 1,200, Stephen. I'll risk a thousand. Thousand dollars it is. The Bible is the category. Here is your clue. Jesus said, Among those born of women, there is not a greater prophet than this man of the wilderness. Uh, who is John the Baptist? You are right. And you're now in the lead with 2,200. Select again, Stephen. Uh, let's have potpourri for 100. Answer. This U.S. composer was born July 4th, 1826 to William Barclay Foster, a Pennsylvania merchant. Stephen. 
was Stephen Foster. Right. Uh, Bird TV for 200. Robert Blake had a pet cockatoo named Fred on this detective series. David. What is Beretta? Yes, select. Uh, Bird TV for 300, please. The Pigeon Sisters were Oscar and Felix's nutty English neighbors on this classic sitcom. Lynn. The odd, what is the, who is the odd couple? You are right <laughs> on the plus side. It works, it works. Oh, then I'm going for Bird TV for 400, thank you. Burgess Meredith said he developed the quack quack noise this bird brain made to cover a cough. David. Who is the penguin? Yes, select. Uh, bird TV for 500, please. In 1981, creator Earl Hamner uncorked this series about a winery whose symbol was a bird of prey. Uh, oh. The series was Falcon Crest. Oh, David, geez. back to you. Uh, I'll take uh, rhyme time for 100, please. Above average balsa or oak? Mm. What is good wood? Oh. David, back to you. I'm an actor. I don't work in wood. Uh, rhyme time for 200, please. A heavy and unbroken slumber. Lynn. Uh, what is a deep sleep? That's right. Uh, uh, rhyme time for 300. The principal pickpocket. Lynn. Uh, who is the artful dodger? No. Remember, it's rhyme time. David no. or Stephen? <laughs> The no, no. Chief Thief. Ah. Lynn, pick again. 200 potpourri, please. Potpourri for 200. The piece introduced in 1945 is one of the most famous hybrid tea varieties of this flower. Lynn. What is a rose? That's right. I put a potpourri for 300, please. Founded in 1862, this government department that deals with farmers was given cabinet status in 1889. Lynn. Uh, what is the, the thing of the environment? No. Well, a little bit. David. What is the Department of Agriculture? That's right. And you're now tied with Stephen for the lead. Select. Uh, rhyme time for 400, please. Answer. Exaggerated tale about a farm structure. David. Barn yarn. What is barn yarn? That's right. Yes. <laughs> Good for uh, you. Rhyme time for 500, please. An all-important bet. What is a major? Ooh. Wager. Major wager. And that does it for the first round. And we have David with a 400-point lead over Stephen and Lynn at minus 100. You can all relax for a few minutes now. Put down the steering button. Why am I minus? Tell me. Give me a good reason. I've been answering. I've been beeping. These beastly people next to me are not helping me in any way. They don't say, after you, Lynn, as any real gentleman would. What's the matter? Does the word stupid mean anything? <laughs> Goodbye. Take me to my car. Thank yes, you. I will. Stand over here. You're going to have a lot of fun in the second round. Let's spend some time now with our players. David Duchovny, the star of The X Files, plays Fox Muller, and that's a hit series on the Fox Network. Any yeah. connection between your name and. Uh, network? Well, when the show was originally pitched, the name of the character was NBC Mulder. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then it became Syndicated Mulder. Uh -huh. You know, it finally got to Fox and it became Fox Mulder. It's a good name. What's your charity, David? Uh, the Children's Defense League. It's right. uh, for adv advocacy rights for uh, children, and legal rights and health issues. Okay, good for you. Lynn Redgrave. Yes. Star of... Had Don't many say successes. stupid star. You no, didn't, no, you didn't no. say stupid I, star. I apologize for saying Yes, that. I would hope so. Yes, I'm, I'm <laughs> mean you. and cruel, and now yes. it's coming out when yes. I have to deal with certain yes, kinds that's of people. Right. You're never going to live down this. My charities, well, I, I, my charities are to do with the classical American theater tradition, and so therefore I have two charities. Edwin Booth's uh, a place where he, in fact, died and founded the Hamden Booth Library, the great uh, classical actor Edwin Booth. I am president of the Players in New York. And also PATH, the Preservation Association for Tudor Hall, which is the birthplace of the Maryland Booths. I'm sorry, Our great tradition. That's, that's not correct. Good for you. And our next player, as we introduced him, the most successful novelist in the world today, over 300 million books. Has your style of writing changed over the years, Stephen? Do you write now, keeping in mind that, hey, this is going to wind up as a movie? Sure. No. <laughs> Actually, my writing style has changed in the sense that I'm older and a lot slower, so I have to find new words, and it's difficult to remember things, which is part of my problem in this game. All right. Tell us about your charity. Uh, my charity is the Bangor Public Library. The public library where I live has fallen on hard times. It's a beautiful old library, and uh, we're trying to raise some money to make sure it doesn't fall down. Okay. Good for you. 
Three great charities, four great charities, actually, benefiting from these players' performances. We'll be back to play Double Jeopardy right after this. Lynn's raring to go. She's going to select first in this Double Jeopardy round. So let's get all the dollar figures into the screens, and we will reveal these as our categories, starting off with World Cities. Next we have Sports, uh -huh. yeah, that. Ballet, Ballet, U.S. Presidents, Food, and finally, General Science. Lynn, uh, I pick a ballet for 200, please. Answer. In a famous fairy tale ballet, a ragged beggar woman is really this heroine's fairy godmother. Lynn. Uh, wh what is the Sleeping Beauty? No. Stephen or David? Ye. The ballet is Cinderella. Lynn, select again. <laughs> ballet for 400. The swan maidens in this 1877 ballet are actually young girls under the spell of an evil magician. Lynn. Who are the Sylphide? No. Mm. David. What is Swan Lake? Yes. I'll take sports for 200, please. On March 23, 1994, he scored his 802nd NHL goal, breaking Gordie Howe's career record. David. Who is Wayne Gretzky? Right. Uh, sports for 400, please. In 1987, this 31-year-old Swede was inducted into the International Tennis Hall of Fame. David. Who is Bjorn Borg? Right. Sports for 600, please. In 1956, this late Yankee hit 52 home runs, the highest single-season total of the 1950s. David. Who is Mickey Mantle? Yes. Uh, sports for 800, please. In 1979 and 1980, Terry Bradshaw, this team's quarterback, was named Super Bowl MVP. David. Who are the Pittsburgh Steelers? Yes. Sports for 1,000. Don't look at me that way. <laughs> On August 7, 1995, Jonathan Edwards became the first man to leap further than 60 feet in this event. The event was the triple jump. Hop, uh -huh. step, and jump. Uh -huh. David, you did well. You're in the lead with 5,100. Pick again. Okay, I'll take uh, U.S. presidents for 200, please. On July 4th, 1798, he became the only former president named Commander-in-Chief of American Forces. Stephen. Who is George Washington? Right. Um, let's have food for 200. A rack of this meat usually contains six to eight ribs and is served with mint jelly. David. What is lamb? That's it. Select again. Uh, U.S. presidents for 400, please. This president was named for the Reverend Stephen Grover of Caldwell, New Jersey. David. Who is Grover Cleveland, Alexander? Right. No. Oh. No, sorry. Stephen. Who is Grover Cleveland? Yes. I was still on sports. <laughs> I know you were. <laughs> Stephen, select. Let's have uh, food for 400. Answer there. This sauce that tops Eggs Benedict is also good on artichokes. Stephen. What is hollandaise sauce? That's right. Uh, food for 600, please. Order fried calamari in a restaurant and you'll get this seafood. Stephen. What is squid? Yes. Food for 800. This heavy, dark rye bread is also known as schwarzbrot, or black bread. David. What is pumpernickel? That's right. Select. Uh, U.S. presidents for 600, please. During his administration, the slave trade was abolished and the Louisiana Territory was purchased. David. Who is Thomas Jefferson? Right. Uh, U.S. Presidents for 800, please. In 1971, he published The Vantage Point, Perspectives of the Presidency, 1963-1969. Lynn. Who is Lyndon Johnson? You're right. Oh, I can't stand it. Ballet for 600. Quasimodo is a leading character in La Esmeralda, a ballet based on this classic novel. Lynn. Uh, who is the Hunchback of Notre Dame? Right. Pick again. Uh, ballet for 800, please. In 1992, this niece of Cecil B. DeMille choreographed her last ballet, The Other. Lynn. Who is Agnes DeMille? Right. A ballet for 1,000. Double Exposure is a Joe Layton ballet based on this author's 1891 novel, The Picture of Dorian Gray. Stephen. Who is Oscar Wilde? Good for 1,000. Oh, oh, oh. uh, U.S. Presidents for 1,000. The answer? Oh. Daily Double, one and two in the round. And it gives you a chance once again to take the lead. Um, I'll go for 2000 Alex. All right, $2,000 is at risk on this clue. With Republicans split between Taft and Teddy Roosevelt, this Democrat was elected president in 1912. Who is Woodrow Wilson? You're right. Oh. And the 2000 puts you in the lead with 6900 Select again. General Science for 200 Answer. Deoxyribonucleic acid, the genetic material of all cells, is better known by this abbreviation. Stephen. What is DNA? Right. General science for 400. It's the term for molten rock flowing from a volcano or other fissure in the Earth's surface. 
Lynn. What is lava? Yes. Uh, general science for 600. The name of this violent tropical cyclone of the Western Pacific comes from Cantonese for big wind. Stephen. What is monsoon? No. Lynn or David? The word is typhoon. Ah. Lynn, back to you. Yes. Food for a thousand, please. <laughs> Traditionally, this Scottish tea treat is split in two and eaten with butter, preserves, and clotted cream. David. What is a scone? Yes. Uh, I'll take general science for 800, please. Answer there. The other day we got it. You have just regained the lead, David. Okay, I'll, I'll wager 2,000. All right. General science is the category. Here is your clue. Sweeter than sucrose or glucose... This fruit sugar is also called levulose. What is fructose? That's it. And that takes you to 9,300. And we have less than a minute to go in the round. Select again. General science for 1,000, please. This word can mean unable to produce offspring or free from living microorganisms. Lynn. What is sterility? Sterility or sterile, yes. Of uh, world cities for 200, please. Answer. The main traffic artery of this Italian city's historic section is the Grand Canal. David. What is Venice? Yes. Uh, World Studies 400, please. The old part of this Quebec City borders the St. Lawrence River between Barrie and McGill Streets. David. What is Montreal? Right. Uh, World Studies for 600, please. The most picturesque part of this Portuguese capital is the Alfama along the Tagus River. Lynn. Uh, what is Lisbon? That's right. Uh, World Studies 800, please. The name of this Iraqi capital is Persian for God-given. Stephen. What is Tehran? No. Lynn or David? Correct response, what is Baghdad? Oh, we have one last <laughs> clue which will remain hidden. Oh. And let's see. David has the lead with $9,900. Next we have Stephen with 5700 And Lynn came alive beautifully yeah. in that double jeopardy round. She winds up with 3500 <laughs> And now, final jeopardy, players. Yes. So consider your wagers carefully as we show you this final Jeopardy category. Business and literature. We'll be back with the clue after this break. The final Jeopardy category for our celebrities today is business and literature. In a moment, players, you'll get the clue. You'll have 30 seconds to write down your question. Here is today's final Jeopardy answer. On March 24th, 1994, this store held a breakfast to announce the new Truman Capote Literary Trust. Good luck. sure you all got the right response. Oh, We're going to start with you, Lynn. Oh, the store is Brentano's. No, that no, is incorrect. That's a good, that's well, a good answer. A good, good Not that. Thank you, David. Yeah, all right. Your yes, wager was 3500 That yep. was a good thing Very to do, good but unfortunately, it unfortunately. takes you down to zero. So let's go to Stephen Quite King now. He had $5,700. He was in second place, and his response was, what is Tiffany's? Yes, oh, Truman course, Capote wrote Breakfast it. at Tiffany's. Good response from you, sense. Stephen. Your wager? Everything. You're in the lead now with $11,400. And now we come to David Duchovny, who was leading with 9900 He could be the winner today if he came up with the correct response. If. He wrote down, what is Rizzoli's? And so that's incorrect. Let's see what your wager was. 9000 That drops you all the way down to 900 But not to worry, David, because you and Lynn... Your charities and yours is the uh, Children's Defense Fund. Yeah. You will each receive $10,000. And Stephen King, your charity will receive $11,400 without yes. thanks. You're the winner today. Congratulations. And thank you all for being here. Tomorrow, three more of your favorites. See you then. So long. Join us tomorrow for Celebrity Jeopardy. This is Johnny Gilbert speaking. Jeopardy was created by Merv Griffin. Produced by Columbia TriStar Television.